Welcome to Instant GMP. The staff at Instant GMP prepared the GMP Compliance series of presentations to focus on good manufacturing practices and GMP compliance for FDA regulated products. These are brought to you by our quality and manufacturing experts in the hope that it will help you avoid any GMP compliance issues in your shop. This presentation will address qualification and validation of vendors and suppliers. There are a number of definitions for validation, all of which say the same thing in different ways. This definition comes from the World Health Organization GMP text. There is a more expanded version in the WHO text on the validation and manufacturing processes such as the collection and evaluation of data, beginning at the process development stage and continuing through the production stage, which ensure that the manufacturing processes, including equipment, building, personnel, and materials are capable of achieving the intended result on a consistent and continuous basis. Validation is the establishment of documented evidence that a system does what it is supposed to do. There are three key points to take from these definitions. The evidence must be documented. Validation applies to several aspects of manufacturing including process development, materials, personnel, and equipment. It should demonstrate that the system does what is expected of it. Validation is carried out against a set of criteria that are defined in advance. These criteria are detailed in predefined protocol documents. Validation is an essential part of GMP. There are two main reference sources in the WHO documentation relating to validation. Firstly, the WHO GMP text covers validation in section 4 of the GMP text. Then there is a second document on validation that describes recommended practices for validation and qualification, known as the 40th Report of the Expert Committee. Manufacturers should identify what validation and qualification work should be done. All systems, equipment, processes, procedures should be reviewed and the manufacturer should decide what qualification and validation work needs to be performed. The intention is to prove that all critical aspects of the work are controlled and performed as required. Validation and qualification work must be documented. A design qualification documents evidence that should prove that the premises, Supporting utilities such as water systems, air handling systems, gas supply, compressed air, and equipment have been designed in accordance with GMP and meet their user requirements slash design specification needs. An installation qualification documents evidence that proves that the premises supporting utilities such as a water system, air handling system, gas supply, compressed air, and equipment have been built and installed in accordance with GMP and meet their specifications. An operation qualification documents evidence that proves that the premises supporting utilities such as water and handling systems, gas supply, compressed air, and equipment are operating in accordance with GMP and meet their operational specifications. A performance qualification documents evidence that proves that the supporting utilities such as water systems, air handling systems, gas supply, compressed air, and equipment are consistently performing in accordance with GMP and their specifications, usually over a period of time. Processes and procedures should be established on the basis of a validation study. Periodic revalidation should be performed to ensure that the process and procedures remain capable of achieving the intended results. Particular attention should be given to the validation of processing, testing, and cleaning procedures. Process validation requires the identification of critical elements of the production process. It also includes qualification of supporting systems such as water production, air supply systems, and equipment qualification. Qualification and validation should be applicable to aspects of operation which may affect the quality of the product. It therefore may include premises, supporting utilities, processing equipment, performance, and the actual process. Any significant change may require requalification or revalidation. Qualification and validation should be done in accordance with the ongoing program. Initial qualification and validation is normally required, DQ, IQ, OQ, and PQ. Then there should be an evaluation or review annually to determine whether validation or qualification is required again. This is to ensure that the company maintains a continued validation status. The company policy on validation should be described in relevant documentation, such as the quality manual or the validation master plan. There are different types of documents related to validation. There are master plans, protocols, reports, and SOPs. Each manufacturer should have a validation master plan. It describes the overall philosophy, intention, and approach to establishing performance adequacy. It also identifies which items are subject to qualification and validation, and the nature and extent of such a validation. It defines the applicable validation and qualification protocols and procedures. During the inspection, you should evaluate the VMP to assess whether it covers the overall policy that defines validation and what should be subjected to validation. It should cover the responsible persons, what should be validated, where should the validation be done, when validation should be performed, and why and how the validation should be performed. 
It should include a breakdown of the processes, plant, or equipment into separate parts. It should also determine which are critical to the quality of the product and therefore require validation and at which stages. For example, in a project commission, a sterile manufacturing suite, the operation of the sterilizers is critical and will require IQ, OQ, and PQ. And the operation of the ventilation system is critical and will require IQ, OQ, and PQ. The VMP should be a concise and easy to read document, which will serve as a guide to the validation committee and personnel who are responsible for performing validation. The VMP is also a source document for use by regulatory inspectors. The document should clearly define who is responsible for performing validation. Qualification and validation should be conducted in accordance with predefined approved validation protocols and the results and conclusions presented in written validation reports. These should be in recommended format, ensure a proper audit trail, traceability, and stored for a defined period of time. Processes and procedures should be established on the basis of these results. We already mentioned what should be validated. Of particular importance is the qualification and validation of premises, utilities, equipment, and processes. Of critical importance with particular attention is the validation of analytical test methods, automated systems, and cleaning procedures. The main reference text that the WHO has produced relating to validation is published as Annex 6 of the 34th Report of the WHO Expert Committee of Specifications for Pharmaceutical Preparations published in 1996. The annex is titled Good Manufacturing Practices, Guidelines on the Validation of Manufacturing Processes. This document covers the subject in some detail. It provides a glossary of terms, discussions of the topic in general, types of validation, the different approaches that can be taken, and recommendations on how to organize a validation program. It also presents an outline for a validation protocol and report. The focus is mainly on validation of manufacturing processes, but many of the points also relate to other operations, such as cleaning. However, for guidance on the validation of analytical techniques, you should refer to Annex 5 of the WHO Expert Committee's 32nd report entitled Validation of Analytical Procedures Used in the Examination of Pharmaceutical Materials. The VMP should typically include at least the following sections. Approval page of Table of Contents, Introduction and Objectives, Facility and Process Description, Personnel Planning and Scheduling, Responsibilities of Committee Members, Process Control Aspects, Equipment, Apparatus, Process and Systems to be Validated, acceptance criteria, documentation, SOPs, training requirements. The results obtained during the performance of the validation must be recorded. The validation report reflects the final test results and other documents such as instrument calibration certificates. It is on the basis of this report that the decision is taken on whether a particular process is judged to be validated. During the inspection, you must assess whether there is a written report reflecting results after completion of the validation. The results should have been evaluated and analyzed and compared with acceptance criteria by the responsible personnel. All results should meet the criteria of acceptance and satisfy the stated objective. If necessary, further study should have been performed. If the results were found to be acceptable, the report should have been approved and authorized. The report should include the title and objective of the study and refer to the protocol details of materials, equipment, programs, and cycles used, together with details of procedures and test methods. It should provide a comparison of the results with the acceptance criteria. In addition, it should include recommendations on the limits and criteria to be applied to all future production batches. It is common practice in many companies for the protocol and report to be combined into a single set of documents. The protocol is approved as a form on which the test results are recorded as they become available. This reduces the amount of paperwork that needs to be stored and makes an overall assessment of the validation results easier to carry out. This presentation is just one of the many videos and webinars available on CGMP compliance. You can access the rest at the GMP Certification Resource Center. Thank you and have a wonderful day.